Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Still on Power Machines N5, today we are doing an exercise based on our previous lesson which was on compressors. My name is Tsepo. Please subscribe to my channel to make sure you keep on receiving videos like this. Click that notification button so that you will be notified every time I post a new video. So with me I have a question paper which was written on 11 April 2019 and we are doing question number six which is compressors and then the statement reads as follow air enters a single stage single acting recipro reciprocating air compressor at a rate of uh, 15 cubic meters per minute at a temperature of 42 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 100 kilopascal. The air leaves the compressor at a pressure of 700 kilopascal. The compressor runs at a speed of 350 rads per minute and a clearance volume of 5% uh, of the swept volume. Take the index of compression as n, as n is equal to 1.3 and the mechanical efficient the mechanical efficiency is 85 percent of the reciprocating compressor so this is our information the information that they gave us they gave us the information of the air when it comes into the cylinder and then they gave us the pressure of the air when it is leaving the cylinder this the speed and then they told us that uh the, the clearance volume, which is V3, you say V3, excuse, it equals to 5% of, uh, of the swept volume. Uh, so this is how we write it. We will say V3, it's equals to 0 0.05, we will divide here by 100. And then we'll get 0 0.05 as V. And then they gave us the index of polytropic and then they gave us the mechanical efficiency and the first question they say calculate the cylinder volume of the compressor so the cylinder volume is the swept volume remember we had a compressor uh, that's the basic structure we had the bottom dead center and the top dead center and then we said that this it's a stroke volume which is also known as the swept volume that is what they are they are referring to when they say we must calculate the cylinder volume of the compressor so we know that the swept volume when we look at the graph the swept volume it is equals to v1 minus v3 v1 minus v3 and then the value of v3 we substitute the value of v3 v1 minus the value of v3 which is 0 0.05 uh, sv and then we simplify this equa this equation we get v1 it's equals to uh, 1.05 SV. So we do not know the value of V1. We are looking the, for the value of SV. So, so far, we cannot continue with this uh, equation. So we go to our, um, our the information that was given to us. They gave us the 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 um, the value of volume, the amount of volume that enters that comes into the system per minute. The question to, uh, the question in the question they said we must calculate for the volume in cubic meters just for the volume in cubic meters. They didn't tell us that we must calculate for the volume per minute. So we know that the volume 
that will come into the system per minute the volume per minute will be equals to the effective volume which is from v4 to v1 it is equals to v4 minus v1 which is the actual amount of uh, which is the actual amount of volume that comes into the system when our induction valves open in one stroke and then it is equals to the effective volume times the the speed which is rads per minute times the cycle the cycle per minute and then now we have the amount of volume per minute we have the speed we also have the cycle per minute the, the cycle per minute they said a enters a single stage single acting which is one so we equate the our graph and make the effective volume the subject of the formula since that is the only in that's the only thing that we do not have and then v4 minus v1 will be equals to the uh, the the volume per minute divided by rads per minute which is the speed times the cycle per minute the cycle per minute and then we substitute our volume per minute we are given is 15 1 5 divided by our rads per minute is 350 divided by 350 and then our cycle per minute is 1 and then we get the value of the effective volume which is v 4 minus v1 is uh, what's the answer 0 0.04 to eight cubic meters this is the amount of of uh of volume which is, this is the volume of air that comes into the system when the induction valve open in one stroke this is the effective volume which is v4 minus v1 minus v4 is v1 minus v4 not this v1 minus v4 one four yeah and then <clears throat> when we look at this equation now we have the value of the effective volume but this is not what we were asked to calculate when we look at this we see that it is v1 minus v4 the value of v1 we already have and it is given in terms of the swept volume the same swept volume that we are trying to find in this uh, question so we will take the value of the uh, of v1 and put it here and then it is in terms of the swept volume the same swept volume that we are trying to calculate for and then we look at v4 now we do not have the value of v4 so if we can get the value of v4 substitute the value of v1 we can be able to get the value of the swept volume which they said we must calculate so now the next step from this we must get the value of v4 so now we come to our graph remember from our previous video i said any information that you want between v4 between point number four and point number three between point number one and point number two you can get using the formulas uh of polytropic the formulas corresponding with polytropic processes from uh i gave you the table and i will also post it uh in this video 
we can we can get the information that we are looking for using the formulas corresponding with polytropic law and then the value of v4 we can calculate using this formula uh which is p3 v3 n that's equals to p4 v4 to the power n we are looking for the value of uh v4 now we must make v4 the subject of the formula and then we say v4 it's equals to v3 times p3 divided by p4 all raised to 1 divided by our index which is n so from here it's just substitution we will say the value of v4 it's equals to the value of v3 which is this 0 0.0 0 0.05 in bracket n3 the 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 pressure that corresponds with our uh stage number three it's 700 which will be 700 divided by 100 and then one divided by 1.3 and then here sorry this is 0 0.05 sv and then i got my answer as mm, 0 0.223 sv so now we have the value of v4 our v4 is also given in terms of sv which is a good thing for us because we are looking for the value of sv so this is not going to be a problem so i will erase this step that i just uh did yo this step we have the value of v4 and then we have this formula uh okay this v1 minus v4 we have this formula then from this we can come and say the value of v1 this is the value of v1 which is 1.05 sv minus the value the value of v4 which is 0 0.223 sv i will erase this it's equals to which is uh, 0 0.04 428 and then when we equate this i got that my answer it's going to be uh we will minus here and then divide by the value that we will get here and then my value for sv i got that it is 0 0.0518 cubic meters and then that is how we find the value of sv and then after getting the value of sv we must also come to this formula and also get the value of v1 just to show them that we know that we are doing this has marks don't forget to to to, to also calculate for the value of v1 so we have the value of v of sv which is what they said we must calculate now we take the value of sv put it here and then get the value of our v1 which is uh, 0 0.0518 which is uh, i got that it is 0 0.0543 cubic meters and then that is how we go about answering this question which was question number one and then we go to our second question which is 6.2 and then our 6.2 they say calculate uh the delivery temperature for the delivery temperature of the compressor and then i will erase this the delivery uh, temperature 
So because we are using polytropic law, we go back to that formula sheet and then look for a formula that will help us achieve uh, what we want, which is T2. Here we have T1, we have T1, we do not have T2. So remember in the information we were given, I think it was 42, 42 degrees. 42 degrees and then I added uh, 273 and then that that's how I came about this value which is 315 and then we do that because we are doing we are dealing with an ideal gas every time we are dealing with an ideal gas we use our temperature in kelvins we do not use our temperature in uh, degrees Celsius so this you must do always in compressors because we are dealing with an ideal case so i think i know we are covered in that part and then we go to that form we go to our formula sheet look for a formula that we can use and then i got that the formula that we can use is t2 divided by t1 is equals to p2 divided by p1 n minus 1 divided by n and then we say p2 t2 uh this is our t2 we make it the subject of the formula and then we say t1 times p2 minus p1 n minus 1 all by n remember you mustn't forget to make whatever you are looking for the subject of the formula because that also has marks then we substitute p1 t1 is 315 times p2 which is 700 all by divided by 100 and 1.3 minus 1 all by 1.3 and then i got that my t2 is 4 93.5 5, two. that was easy max day and then if they say they want the temperature in degrees Celsius you will say minus 273 and then get the answer in degrees per Celsius I didn't calculate for that let me put my calculator first and then it's going to be 93.552 minus and then your answer will be 22 two two zero point five five two degrees Celsius you can leave your answer here just in case they want both the answers because you will never know with these people so yeah that's our question number two we go to question number three they say calculate the power required to drive the compressor in kilo what we no longer need this i will uh, erase it and then we do on an, an our number three our number three we are looking for the power we know that the power it's power it's equals to work done divide by time and then we said the work done the formula for work done i gave you a formula like this on our previous lesson p1 ve which is the effective volume uh the effective volume which is given by v1 minus v4 yeah but this is how you are going to get it on your formula sheet so i'm going to leave it like that n divided by n minus one this is uh and then we say p2 divided by p1 all by all raised to n minus 1 all by n minus 1 and then this is the formula for work done but because we will be using an effective because now we will be using an effective diameter sorry we will be using an effective volume here which is given in 
meter in uh, cubic meters per minute we are going to say this is going to be our power because we know that power is the rate of uh, work done per second so if we can convert this to be in cubic meters per second our answer this will be our power so we do not need we, we won't need to calculate for the work done alone and then come to divide by the time because the volume that we have the effective volume it already has the time that we are looking for so let me just say because let me just do uh okay it's 100 and then the the volume is going to be 15 divided by 60 we, we divide it by 60 because it is in cubic meters per minute and then we divide by 60 to bring it to this so that we are able to get our power we know that power is equals to the rate it's equals to work done per second 15 divided by 60 and then we say 1.3 divided by 1.3 uh, three minus one and then we say p2 which is 700 divided by 100 uh, 1 1.3 minus 1 divided by 1 1.3 minus 1 and then the answer that I got here it's going to be 61.407 because our pressure it's in kilojoules it's sorry it's in kilopascal our answer is also going to be it's all the SI units of our answer will also be in kilowatts but now we are given mechanical efficiency we must also include the mechanical efficiency we know that mechanical efficiency mechanical efficiency it's equals to the output power divided by the input power times 100 now we have the mechanical efficiency we have the input power uh, we have the output power and then now we are looking for the input power they said we must calculate for the power required which is the input power so now we can we will have to make this the subject to the formula the input power the input power it's equals to output uh, output 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 power divided by the mechanical efficiency times 100 which we are going to get it as the output power is what we just calculated the 61.407 divided by the mechanical efficiency which is 80 nah, 89 85 times 100 and then i got that my answer is 72.2 for four kilowatts so that is basically the end of our question yeah and it is basically the end of our lesson today hope this video will be of help to you don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel uh, like this video share it with others also comment and tell me what you think about today's channel today's lesson my name is Tepo from me to you. I will see you on the next video, which will be, we will be doing another exercise based on compressors. Ciao.